The Pipslope Mark II is a compact attack decay or attack sustain decay envelope generator with both direct and voltage control over attack and decay times. Both a trigger and gate input are available for interfacing with sequences or keyboards. There is a shape control for setting the voltage curve and an end of slope gate output for synchronizing other events at the completion of a slope. Envelopes may loop freely like an LFO or operate in one of the two additional triggered loop modes that make it easy to create echo, bouncing ball or burst type effects. Although it is only 4 HP, the PIP2 is a well-rounded modulator that is just as capable of being the primary envelope of a system as it is an extra utility. Let's take a closer look at all of the features. To start, we will look at using the PIP slope as a basic envelope. A simple way to demonstrate is by controlling the pitch of an oscillator. We'll patch the 0 to 5 volt envelope out to the volt per octave of the MCO and trigger the PIP slope from a simple clock on the PAM. Let's adjust the decay time. There is a range of approximately 1 millisecond to 7 minutes per envelope stage. If we turn the shape control to the left, the envelope shape bends, giving the decay stage an exponential curve. The shape control does not affect the actual envelope times, but may affect the perception of its length. As we turn shape to the right, the decay stage becomes logarithmic. Notice that the attack stage does the opposite, going from logarithmic to linear to exponential from left to right. These three controls allow for many different shapes to easily be created. So far we have been using the trigger input which produces an attack decay envelope. If we repatch with a keyboard gate output to PIP's gate input, a sustain phase will connect the attack and decay stages. This sustain will last the duration of the gate or key press. Notice the sustain phase begins after attack reaches full level. The moment the input gate falls, sustain ends and decay begins. If we alter the length of the key press, we will hear the envelope respond. Let's patch up a simple baseline with the pip slope controlling the filter cutoff of the mum mate. We're going to add some dynamics to the modulation by controlling decay time from the Quade Mega Slope, which is going to be working as a basic LFO. Immediately, we can hear the sequence become much more interesting. Modulation can be dialed in from the LFO in combination with PIP's decay control, which acts as an offset. Let's repatch the LFO to control attack time. The 
shape control is very useful for fine tuning the envelope while modulating attack and decay times. Now let's modulate both attack and decay with clock synced random voltages for a more calculated approach. We can hear the more mechanical yet dynamic sound that this gives the sequence. Keep an eye on Pam's level indicator lights for channels 1 and 2 and listen how the envelope responds. The pip slope has three loop modes selected via the loop knob. The first two modes concern triggered or gated envelope operation. Each of these two modes re-triggers the slope using a different method. The first is decreasing amplitude, which like it sounds, repeats the envelope with a decreasing amplitude per subsequent repeat. Repeats will continue until the level reaches zero volts. When controlling a VCA, this makes for a fairly convincing echo-like effect. This mode can also be used to create playful swung or call and response type rhythms with a more organic feel. As usual, the shape control is very useful in controlling the overall feel of the envelope. Here we have repatched the looped envelope to control the filter cutoff. Naturally, it has less of an echo sound and takes on a quality similar to that of a larger multi stage envelope. Let's turn the loop knob up past halfway to switch to the second mode, known as decreasing time. This mode repeats the envelope with a shortening distance between each repeat. Another way to think of it is a voltage curve that mimics the physics of a bouncing ball. Let's turn loop up a little more, which will increase the number of repeats. We can slow down the clock triggering the envelope to better observe the bouncing ball effect. Wow, 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 wow,
Although this mode may appear to be a bit scientific, it can be surprisingly fitting for many musical uses. Playing with the attack and shape controls takes the envelope further away from bouncing ball and creates unique smooth voltage curves that would be difficult to create with a typical envelope. Finally, there is a typical looping function accessed by turning the loop knob all the way up. Standard loop mode is further indicated by the yellow loop LED coming on. The envelope is now re-triggering itself, effectively acting as an LFO. Let's patch it to modulate the wave shape of the MCO. The attack and decay controls alter both primary shape and overall speed of the LFO. The shape control makes it very easy to modify the voltage curve without changing the speed. Let's repatch the looping envelope to control the level of a VCA. In loop mode, the EOS or end of slope jack can be used to clock other modules like sequences or clock dividers. EOS outputs a short trigger at the end of each envelope cycle. Let's patch EOS to clock the five step sequencer mode of Quade Megaslope. We will patch Quade to modulate MCO's wave shape. Let's also sync up Pamela to the EOS trigger. The shape control becomes especially useful when clocking other modules from Pipslope. It lets us alter the perceived envelope time without actually changing the envelope length. Let's build up the patch a bit. Thanks for watching this overview of the brand new compact but versatile Pipslope Mark II. Visit BusyCircuits.com for more information.